Well, yeah, I got that for you. Hey, Trucy. Appreciate that. Yeah. Not the funnest circumstances to be under. No, but you know what? I so admire your courage in doing this. I can't, I can't tell you um, how brave I think you are to follow through on this. All weekend, I keep feeling like, uh, yeah, let's just bag it. You know what I mean? I just, I kept, every day of the weekend, and all weekend, I just felt sick. Like, you know, like, why am I doing this to myself? You know, is it really necessary to do this to myself? But it, uh, it just keeps resurfacing for me. Sure. And um, I don't like to be one of those people that dwells on faith. I don't, I don't like to be one of those people that, uh, I don't, wouldn't want my past to define me, but at the same time, um, my whole life, you know, I've wondered, there's a lot of things I've wondered. Sure. And, um, yeah, so, anyway, I, I have some notes here, because I, I, what I did was this morning I woke up and I thought, gosh, you know, I'm probably going to get all panicky and nervous and not remember what it is that's is weighing on me. Your, your kids and they might have passed on you kind of the effect that this has had on me over the years. Yeah, I talked to you know, she she saw you and spent some time with you and had some some exchange and so yeah I've heard I've heard especially Yeah, because it kind of in one sense, it kind of, you know, it kind of made my childhood, you know, from that point forward, just changed, changed everything for me, you know what I mean? Like, so it's not so blissful anymore. Um, but I just wrote down some, and they, they probably passed some of this on to you as far as, you know, from that point forward, I started sleeping with a knife at my side. Oh, gosh. Yeah, a hunting knife. Um, lots of nightmares. Um, always, I was always afraid of the dark. I, I've always been afraid of men, um, especially men. Um, I've always been really suspicious of men in the church for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that would make sense, but mm -hmm. with you, you know, with what I knew about you being a professor and and being a filmmaker, you know, having like that kind of notoriety in the church, it always just made me real suspicious of, um, and not just you, I've heard lots of stories of other people. So have I. Um, it's just very suspicious for my own kids, uh, anxiety when it comes to my own kids, like for my kids to be away from me, I will have like a full blown mm. anxiety attack. Yeah, like my daughter went on a my daughter went on um, the Young Women's uh, Overnighter, and like I had to talk to every single leader, and I had to know who was going to be there, and and I even had to tell the bishopric I don't want them spending the night up there, and um, and then I can't sleep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because when they're away from me, you can imagine, and then the emotions range from anger, resentment. Sure. Anxiety. Of course. <clears throat> so that's kind of like, and, and it's just been an ongoing thing for me, and I think it's amplified with, with my own children. Um, I think in my 20s, you know, or my early 20s before I had kids, I don't, I don't think that I was, but, but since I've had my own kids, it just keeps resurfacing, and my kids keep asking, why are you the only dad that's so paranoid and so suspicious of other people? And you can imagine. I can't imagine. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I did that damage to you. Yeah. I've always wanted to ask you, um, what was going through your mind that night? What was going on with you? Well, it was, a, obviously, it was a really dark time for me. Um, I was struggling in my business. At the time, I had a, a film production company um, with a partner in Texas, and we just... Uh, had a project go south on us and didn't know where the next paycheck was coming from and I were having a hard time. In fact, that night before I came downstairs, uh, I'd said to her, um, you know, I want a divorce. And um, 
this may sound odd to you, but I expected her to say, no, we're not going to go there. But instead she said, okay. And um, that, just, that just pushed me into a, into a dark place. Um, and I, I remember getting out of bed that night. And I remember saying just a very quick prayer. Oh God, please, not this. And then I came downstairs. And so that's, that's what was going on. There were problems in the business. You know, I said, yes, okay, let's get a divorce. And I've always struggled with depression. I've had a problem with depression since I was in elementary school. I didn't know what it was then. And so, you know, I've tried a lot of different, different ways to stop the pain of the depression. And, and that night I was acting out sexually and that's what was going on with me because the pain was just so great. I was just trying to find a way to make a connection, a way to stop the pain. And, and you, were the, you were the victim. And I'm so sorry for that. Can I ask you a question? So that night, I, um, when, when you were doing that, I, I was, I was almost certain that you were doing the same to your own kid on the other couch. Yeah, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. In fact, I, I, again, I don't know if this is house, but that's the, this is the only time in my life I have ever done this. You said to me too that you were. You were concerned that maybe there was a pattern of this abuse that had gone on with my own kids or grandkids or with other people, and it's, it's the only time that's happened. Okay. And, and um, were you sexually abused as a kid? I was, actually. I was. And uh, do you remember the pain that caused you? Well, um... I'm not sure how to. I'm not sure how to put it. Um, the the sexual abuse came from my mother, uh, and um, in fact, I've talked I've talked to a therapist about this at pretty great length in an attempt to get a hold of that, and and frankly forgive my mother who's dead now, but frankly forgive her, because I have some sense now of what she was going through at the time. Um, and so I think that was part of the reason for the depression and the anxiety I felt as a child and I felt all my adult life. So yeah, I, I, I have some understanding of what that pain is about. Yeah, I understand that. Um, I, in all honesty, I have a, a hard time believing and I, I should tell you um, there's been times in the past where I've gone on Facebook and just venting about different um, things that I read about, or, you know, social, cultural events and stuff, social events and uh, matters. And I've, I've gone on Facebook and I said that I was molested or, or sexually abused by my uh, best friend's dad at a sleepover. And, um, and then, and I, I did at one point say that it was a BYU professor and an LDS filmmaker without using your name. Um, but I'm aware of, I just, I just want, I want to get this over with and I want to get it, I want to just be honest with each other. And so, um, someone did contact me and share some information um, that, you know, that was concerning. And so, <clears throat> with that said, I just, I just want you to know that, you know, that I really appreciate you just to be honest with me because I do find it hard to believe when someone um, says that, you know, it only happened the one time and only time and, and that's, and, and that I did get caught. Um, I, I'm, I'm not the only one that finds that yeah. um, hard, very hard to believe. And so, um, that's what I, I want to make sure that, you know, from you, uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I know, I understand where you're going with that. Maybe it would help be helpful to understand that I have acted out sexually in other ways. Okay. What's that look like? Like, what do you mean? Well, there was a, a period of time um, when I was visiting prostitutes, and um, and I, you know, had two or three affairs with other women, um, and so with again with the depression and the anxiety, yeah, there were there were periods there were periods when I was acting out in other ways. It's not like this was the only time I ever acted out, and then. I just totally stopped and I never acted out again. That's not that's not accurate. But that's the only time I, I have ever done anything like I did to you. To a child. To a child. Okay. Well, I'll just skip ahead in my question. What do you think about when people say that 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 a child attraction is, is uh, like it and I've read so much on the subject, what do you say when someone says that's you know a very unique uh, pedophilia is a very unique attraction, and um, that it's not curable, and that it's like really addictive. Like, what would you, what do you say to that? Because that's always been my struggle: is how could I be the only one knowing what I've read about you know pedophilia, knowing that how powerful of a thing that is. And, and so, what would, what would you say? Well, you've, you've obviously done more research on this than I have. Um, because after this happened with you, I mean, um, you know, I, I was just horrified at what I'd done. I was just horrified. Because I'd never done anything like that before. Um, and so, I, I guess, uh, you know, and, and I, Again, I, I, being as honest as I can, um, I, I've never considered myself a pedophile. I mean, that, that one instance was so horrifying to me. And I've carried the awareness of that, like, but not to the degree that you have, for sure, but I've carried the awareness of that. And so I've always had some anxiety about it, anxiety of, and question in my own mind, is that something that's deeply rooted in me? Um, and so I've always been, um, I've always been cautious about it. I mean, I mean, I've probably been cautious with my own kids and cautious with my grandkids because I just don't want anything like that to happen again. Um, but would I consider myself a pedophile? I mean, I've never thought of myself in that way. I've certainly thought of myself as being sexually addicted, for sure. Have you ever thought wasn't have you have you ever thought like the the affairs that you had was any of them with men? Uh huh. Couple uh, were. Okay. Couple couple were. So then that makes a little more sense. Yeah, too. a couple were. Okay. I'm trying to understand your honesty. It's helping me a lot because I'm trying to understand why me, a boy, and and now what you're saying makes a little bit more sense. Yeah. Um, and so, it just it just makes me feel good to know that, that you're being honest. With you. If I had to put if I had to put a label on it, um, I guess the label I would put on it is bisexual um, rather than pedophile. Okay, yeah. So when when I was ten, I think, but and I I don't. I mean, I don't proclaim to be. You're just basically saying it was. A, Deep dark moment for you, and well, and, and I need to get to this other question because the other question is something that's really been on my heart for as long as I can remember. Let me just—I don't want to skip ahead here too much. Um, okay, so what counseling um, have you received? Like how how much counseling, and and is is it an ongoing thing, like sexual counseling? Or is it more like counseling just for depression? Like, what's what's your status around all that? I I worked with um, over the years, over the last what twenty five years. Yeah, I worked with a number of counselors, um, and uh, I've worked with two specifically about the sexual addiction. One when we were living in Florida, and one back here. 
Um, and the others have largely been about the, the roots of the depression. But yes, I, I worked specifically with two counselors. Did any of them think it was, did any of them classify a 10 year old boy as different than just like a, a male attraction? Did any of them classify that as more like a pedophilia attraction? Uh, not that I remember. I remember the counselor in Florida asked me a couple of the same questions that you're asking, like, do you still feel an attraction to boys or, you know, to younger kids? And, um, and, and no, I, no. Um, what, uh, so the, the counseling, is that something you have to keep doing throughout your whole life or is that something you kind of graduate from? I'm just curious. Well, this is, this is just opinion, but, you know, I still struggle with the depression. Um, I'm still wrestling with that. In fact, I just went through a drug treatment here in July that was not very helpful. And so the, the conclusion I've sort of come to is that it's going to be with me the rest of my life. And I, it's going to be about managing the depression and managing the pain. So when I, when I say the, the sexual stuff, are you, is the sexual stuff associated with the depression? Is that? It was, yeah, it was. But I've been in the last, oh, I don't know, maybe five or six years, I've been able to sever that connection. So it, it no longer, okay. when I get depressed, I no longer look for ways to act out, act out either through pornography or, you know, or attraction to women or to other men. So that connection, I think, has been broken. Do I still worry about that? Yes, I still worry about that. Okay. You know, I talk about that a lot, I and mean, she's been amazing through all of this. I mean, she's really. Does she know about the affair? She does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With counseling, again, we've wrestled through that and struggled through okay. that. We love each other deeply, and, and, you know, it's frankly, it's a miracle that she stayed with me through all this. Yeah, she's an angel. I know she that really about is. her. I know that about her. Um, let's see. Did you. Do you remember? Did you. And have allow other kids to sleep at your house after I after that happened to me? Did you guys kind of draw a hard line and say no friends are allowed to sleep over? You know, I, I don't remember specifically. I, I, I don't remember any sleepovers after that. Okay. I think they may have drawn the line and said we're just not going to go there. Okay. We're just not going to risk it. Um, my understanding is that the sexual abuse was reported to your state president by um, my dad had called and told him what had happened, and then, uh, and then, um, basically said he had a relationship with the state, state president, um, and that he would, uh, that he would report it to the state president. So when you got called into the state president, um, did you, you just you just basically told him what, what you'd done to me? Um, obviously, you told him what you'd done to me, and then what was the, the punishment? Uh, you said you, what was it, two two years of disfellowship? Disfellowship for two years, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. Do you think that that was lenient on you, or do you... Well, I have no way to, I have no way to judge okay. that. I just don't know how to judge that. I mean, I told the state president that I was, you know, I was prepared to go through whatever he thought was necessary and, and I just sort of let the process okay. take its own. Do you, do you, um, why do you think that my parents were never, um, cause you went through like one of those church courts. Mm -hmm. Why do you think my parents were never contacted? Um, to hear their side of the story. You know, I don't know. That's a that's a good question. I, I don't know if, uh, you know, I, I just don't know what the process of the church okay. court was. And they never they, talked to my parents and they, and they never talked to me. Um, uh, let me see. Well, that surprises me a little bit. I didn't know that. I don't know if you may know, but, but I also, after talking to the state president, you know, he said, look, this 
this has got to be reported to the police. And I said, well, all right, I'll go down and report it to the police. And so I went, I called and got a detective and went down to the Salt Lake City Police Department and reported it to a detective and he took notes. Really? Yeah. See, and, and then what happened, what did he, where did he go with that from there? What's weird about that is my mom and dad, because I, you know, I've always, back then I was 10, I didn't really have a voice. I didn't really sure, have, sure. I wasn't really involved in any of it. I, you always wonder like what came of that. And my parents said that, they said that the police never contacted them, never talked to any police. And they said the church never contacted them. And they says, and then they said, if Sterling had, had done what you just said you'd done, that, that they would have just arrested you on the spot for child sex abuse. Like, cause it, they don't need like approval to, right to uh, charge that. If someone goes to the police and says, I did such and such to a child, according to my parents, they just arrest you on the spot, bang. And even if my parents said, no, 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 don't press charges, it doesn't matter, because once they know that, that, by law, they have to. Yeah, I don't know I don't know if the laws were the same 25 years ago as they are now. Okay. I understand that now. Okay. What came back to me, and I don't remember how it came back to me, but was that your parents had said we're not going to press charges. So I assumed, maybe wrongly, but I assumed from that, okay. that they had been contacted by the police detective and had said, you know, we're not going to pursue this. But again, I don't know that for sure. Okay. I just don't know that. I talked because I wanted to know, you know, why was I... See, I was curious all these years, you know, it's interesting... I assumed that the church had given you lots of counseling and lots of support. And then I was wondering all these years why they didn't give you lots of counseling and support. No? Well, no, I, I, I certainly didn't. No, I didn't get any counseling from the church. I mean, oh. it was it was all about the disciplinary counseling. Oh, crap. Um, so, no, I didn't get any counseling from the church. Oh. Uh, and, and, you know, we figured out that I was going to have to go to an outside counselor to work through this. Which you did on your own. Which we did on, yeah, oh, okay. did on my own. So no, I didn't get any counseling or... Yeah, because I've was i been wondering all these years, like, because, you know, you, you grow up with these these issues, and then I'm wondering, and my parents are like, they're like, gosh, you know, we've never been anything through anything like that, and we didn't know what to do. And, sure. and they're yeah. like, you know, and now it's become so prevalent and out in the open that, you know, you, you yeah. need counseling. And I'm always, I've always thought, like, if the church knew that they, that you'd done that to me, and you, you did tell them that you'd done that to me, then why would the church not have reached out to me and then come to find out from that the state president, his name was Harold Brown, and he said that he was the, a psychologist and head of the entire church's social service program. So I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, why? Did they not, it's kind of a no-brainer. Why it? didn't they offer support for me? Like, why was there absolutely no concern for my welfare um, when you told them what you'd done? Why was there no zero concern for a 10-year-old boy, you know? Well, I'd like to know the answer to that question as well. Um, I mean, he was, I know. But you were forthright when you talked to in that court. You told them. Oh, totally. Yeah, okay. Yeah, totally. Okay. Because that's what made me wonder, was he forthright? Because nobody ever reached out to me or my parents. I don't, I don't lie very well. Okay. You know, I don't. And, and I remember that church court vividly, and uh, I, I was totally candid about it. Oh, okay. And said, look, I'm willing to take whatever punishment you want me to have on this. Uh, I, because I, you know. I sense that about you. You've been very accommodating for me. Um, I appreciate it. It's I, I would so like to see you get beyond this or get as far past it as you can. Um, you already answered that question I had about the police. You already answered that. Um, how come, why, why were you, I, this one's bothered me too because I wondered all these years, you know, do the, do the kids know now? You know, the kids are grown up. It's, it's, the kids are all grown up, grown up. I've always wondered why are the, have the kids not been told uh, about this so that 
you know, that they could have preventative measures around the grandchildren and, and sleepovers and stuff like that. Yeah. To, to be honest with you, um, uh, it never occurred to me or to me that we should bring the kids into this and, and talk with them about this. Oh. Because, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling any, any attraction or pull to the grandkids or to my own kids. And so in terms of, you know, I, I said I worried about this, yeah. you know, because I carried this with me. Um, but it just frankly never occurred to us that, that it was important to bring the kids in. It's, it just never occurred to us. And, mm -hmm. and obviously, I'd like to leave this as far behind. As I wonder if it occurred to that it was just too hard, too hard to go there. Yeah, you'd have to ask her and that's possible. I mean, yeah, but I, I can, it is a hard thing. It is a hard thing. Have you had grandkids over to sleep over? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and they've been fine, yeah. Um, it's one of the questions I've always wondered, I'm just going to ask you. How, how would you have felt if, uh, if the same had happened to your 10-year-old your son? Had a sleepover, but I, you know, I would have felt I would I would have felt awful about it. Yeah. Of course, I would have felt terrible. But the first concern I have to tell you, from my point of view, would have been on that child. That's right. right. That would have been the first concern. Um, this is a hard one. Um, I've got a son that's um, my age now. When my age when this happened to me, my son's about the same age that I was when when. That happened to me. Um, so it just causes a lot of emotion um, when I think about him. And I, when I look at him, he looks like me. So when I look at him, it's like looking at a 10 year picture, 10 year old picture of myself. Um, That's got to be um, a confusing experience, too, given what you're carrying. Yeah, this is a hard one. Um, had I, had I not gotten up and gone to, and, and rushed to the bathroom and locked myself in the bathroom, um, what was your intention for me? Do you, do you remember where your mind was going? I actually, yeah, I do. I actually, I actually don't remember you getting up and going to, into the bathroom. I don't remember that. Because I, I remember specifically being so, I, I sort of came to myself, I came to my senses. And I remember being so horrified at what I was doing that I just left and went back upstairs. I mean, I didn't actually know that you'd gone into the bathroom and you told me and you'd spent the night there. Um, just, you know, that's just horrendous to me. Let me tell you what I remember. I remember you coming over and doing that to me and then, and then I, I woke up and saw you doing that to me and then I, I could see what you were doing and I was frozen and, and you were reaching up over the top of me. And so then um, I started to stir almost like, you know, okay, you know, I'm gonna pretend like I'm waking up. So I started to stir and then you stopped and then, uh, and then I just lay there frozen and then you came back again. And if I remember correctly, it was the third time uh, that you came over and started doing that. And then I um, jumped up and looked at you and you froze and you were standing in the back of the room and you had a, a remote controller in one of your hands and you were looking at a, a TV with like a black and white movie uh -huh. and there was no sound on at all. So you almost like just stood there, froze and kind of pretended like you was watching a movie with no sound on. Uh -huh. And then I ran to the bathroom when I was in the bathroom, uh, you came to the door probably three or four different times. Oh my gosh, I don't remember that. Yeah, and were trying to coax me out of the bathroom, and, and you were saying, you know, are you okay? Come on out. And I wouldn't come out, I just kept saying that I, I felt really sick, and that I, and then after, after probably three or four different times you tried to coax me out, and then I think when she realized I wasn't coming out, it's when you finally maybe, maybe went back downstairs or whatever it was. So that's the way that I recall, that's what I recall distinctly. Well, I'm, I'm sure your memory is more accurate yeah. than mine is.
Okay, so yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure. So I've know. always thought my whole life, if I don't jump up and go to the bathroom, where's that? Like, where are we going with that? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. where's that headed? Because the reason I wonder that, Sterling, is because I feel like I feel like that was a smart thing for me to do was to, oh. to run and lock myself in that bathroom, and I think, you know, what if I was a lesser person? What if I was a more timid person? You know, where was that go? Do you follow where I'm, my logic? Yeah, I follow your logic, and and I've never followed that through in my own head. Yeah, I don't just you probably want to. Yeah, yeah, I just I don't know. I'm sorry. I am sorry. I'm, I'm sorry to make you to make you, you, you go there. You have nothing to be sorry for. You have nothing to apologize for. I feel bad because I don't. I don't want to make you feel. Like, I don't want to make you say, this is what I was going to do to you. But as a victim, I don't know if it's normal, but I've always wondered, like, where were we, where were we ultimately yeah. going? Like, where, sure. where, was, where was this headed? How, how bad would this have would you progressed to if I had gotten out of there? Yeah, so. Um, okay, and then um, you've already answered a lot of these questions that I, that I have. Um, so when you say that sometimes the depression leads to sexual things, and, and that was the only time it ever led towards sexual attraction to children, mm -hmm. um, have you ever viewed child pornography? No, I viewed, I viewed male pornography and female pornography, but not child pornography. Okay. No, that just hasn't been a, hasn't been a thing for me. Okay. Um, Again, um, uh, I wrote here, how can I know you are telling the truth? You got caught. You were required to report to the church authorities. You didn't just voluntarily report yourself. My parents asked to report it directly to the state president who, who we had a relationship with. You were called in by the state president, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there's a big difference to me between turning oneself in and, and confession, so to speak, and being caught. Mm -hmm. um, and so the basis of that question again is... Well, I actually think, I actually think, and my memory's fuzzy on this, but I think I've had a conversation with I think called me at some point. Could be fuzzy about this. Uh -huh. And just told me that he was going to tell the state president that your dad had talked to him and he was going to talk to the state president. Uh, and so I thought, okay, there it is. And this happened, this happened very quickly. I mean, this is within a day or, or two of, uh, uh, you know, what I did. So it happened, it happened very quickly. I mean, I didn't, I didn't have a long time to ruminate about this or think about it. Uh -huh. It happened pretty fast. I see. And you already answered that one. Um, you already answered that one. Did you report your affairs to the church authorities? I did. Uh, you mean you mean subsequently? You mean later after that? Like affairs that you had? Oh. Have you always have you always gone and reported those? To? Oh. oh no, no, I haven't always. Oh, I see. I haven't always. Um, I've been I've been past the acting out as I said for for a while now, and um, I had a long conversation with the bishop. Oh, this has been. I don't know, six or seven years ago, you know, and, uh -huh. and I told him I was in counseling and he was there and we were getting past it. So the, no church action was taken. So you didn't have to go through a court or anything? I didn't have to go through a court again, yeah. For the affairs? Yeah. Um, how do they do that? Do they, because I would think that if you report an affair, they would, again, church court, uh, discipline, Again, I, I'm not entirely sure how all that works, but I know. Um, okay. I, I, I'm just not sure how, how decisions get made or why they get made the way they do. Okay. I mean, I know there is. A, uh, I do know this for sure that, that there is a, a push to see church courts not as courts of punishment, but rather as um, 
as discipline, they call them disciplinary councils now, not church courts. Okay. And and the idea is not just to punish a, a perpetrator unless it's illegal and it's totally illegal. They have to report it oh. to the police. I mean, they do that. But beyond that, uh, it's a more um, it's more of an attempt to be helpful to bring somebody in line for covenants. I understand. Okay. So it reminded you of the church court you ever had to see only one. Oh, okay. Yep. And how many affairs do you think you've had? Oh, gosh. I don't know, maybe three or four. Okay. But those, those were a long time ago. I see. Those were a long time ago. You said something was as recent as five, six years ago? The last time I had an affair with anybody was, um, it was when we were living in Florida, which had been, would have been about 2004. Okay. Yeah, so it's been a long time. Is it, um, I, I heard from someone that you're currently filming the temple videos, the down videos? No. Mm -mm. Oh, you're not? Oh, no. Because um, I thought that that was, but then again, I mean, which is fine unless there had been stuff that you know you hadn't reported. Then I wonder why, why would you be doing that if if there's things that had gone unreported or sure, yeah, it's a fair question. Yeah. Um, did you ever have any uh, sexual interactions with any of the college age students that that you had as a teacher and professor? No. Nope. Okay. No. Um, Never had. So this question kind of was answered for me too. Yeah, it really was. It was when you know there was an interview where where you were asked about Harvey Weinstein, and then oh. and then you said, oh, you know, about his his first accusers, and you said, oh, I guarantee it's only the tip of the iceberg, and uh, that that kind of stuff is very uh, sexual abuse is commonplace in the film industry? In Hollywood, particularly. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I was asked that question in an interview in South Korea last year. Yeah, and then when I, when I read that, you I was like... your research, for sure. Well, yeah, because I read that, and I was like... Because I just want to know who Sterling Van Wagen is, you know? And and then, sure. and then I read that, and I was like... It just... Because, again, as a victim, you can't help but wonder if there's other people out there that are hiding and they're quiet, sure. and they're too scared, or they pe think people won't believe them. Um, so I've always wondered that same thing. Well, there's certain, certainly a lot of instances in the last year or two where that's been the case. That's what I mean. People like, have come forward and have been silent for a year, for decades in some cases. Sterling, when something like this has happened to you, and, and I don't know if you can relate to this on another level, but when something like this has happened to you, you form a very strong emotional connection with it. So... For whatever reason, uh, I got a lot of people come to me and tell me they were sexually abused as children. And then I have that a commonality with them. Um, and because it's just a very prevalent problem. Yeah. Uh, they see, and then also, like news media. Oh, every totally time I totally see it. News, yeah. But I don't think I read it like a normal person. I don't. I, yeah. I read it and then I think it makes me wonder. It makes me stir and wonder, like. Well, it makes me stir and wonder too, because right. again, I still carry. You know, I still carry the memory of that with me. Yeah. And so when I read it, you know, I think, boy, you know what? I did that. You know, I just, you know, and I, I still feel the prick of that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um. So then I've always wondered if I was just the tip of the iceberg, if I was just the tip of the iceberg, um, right? No, you're not. Yeah, those are, I got through that pretty fast. Yeah, those are all the questions that have been on my mind and, uh, and uh, you know, really on my mind all these years. That's it. What, I, what else can I do to help you? Help you through this. I don't know. Uh, told me that you decided to leave the church a while back. Yeah, four or five months ago. I wonder how much this had to do with that decision. Um, uh, 
And I don't know that I can answer that because um, I, I don't know what part that might have played, but ultimately, I mean, I wouldn't put that on you. If that's if that's what you're kind of wondering, I, I wouldn't put I wouldn't put that on you in terms of you know like have I I have been very suspicious of priesthood leaders um, my whole life ever since that happened to me only because uh, I was told that you were this you know BYU professor LDS filmmaker gospel doctrine teacher and and so for me. The, you know, it just kind of it killed my trust in the priesthood. Sure, understandable. So, yeah, understandable. Um, is that the the main reason that we, I mean, we we decided to leave the church because we no longer believe in it? Um, for a while there, for probably the last five, six years, I haven't felt right in it. You know, as I sit here, you know, in 2018, um, it's a mystery to me, but the gospel has never worked for me. Okay. It's never worked for me in terms of getting those sides together. And the only thing I hold on to um, is the atonement, is, is the belief that somewhere, somehow, uh, this is all going to be healed. It's all going to be righted. I don't necessarily believe it's going to happen in this life. I wish it would, for your sake and for my sake both. Yeah. But that's that's the thing I hold on to. That's the only thing I really hold on to, uh, is the atonement. And the church sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. But it's it's never, it's never really worked for me. Okay. And I sure have tried to make it work. For what do you mean it? It hasn't worked. What does that mean? I know what you well, mean. What I know what you're saying what about I mean, the atonement. I get that. Yeah. What I what I mean is I've never been healed. In the sense that, you know, I've never been healed from the depression, from the anxiety. You know, I've struggled with that, like I said, since I was a, in elementary school. Right. You know, it's the thing that's just taken my life off track, created the kind of problems that I've made for you. Yeah. And, you know, and I have gone through this so many times. And I've prayed and i prayed and i said, you know, how long do I have to endure this? How long is this? does this go on? I mean, I've prayed to die so many times. It's just, I, I, I can't even tell you. Um, and, you know, I look at other people in the church, and, you know, they seem to be doing just fine. Yeah. I, I know everybody has problems, and everybody has struggles. And it's just a mystery to me that, that somehow those promises that the gospel will work for you, will heal you, um, it's just a mystery to me that it's never worked for me. Uh -huh. It's just never worked. Right. I always wondered how when people, Sterling, just being honest with you, um, I always wondered how when people would get up and cry and say, you know, Christ's atonement, they're bawling. And then they would say, I know. Mm -hmm. and, and then I would look at them with, you know, and not that I'm like a cynic, but I would kind of sit there and think, listen, like, and how I feel now is, I really didn't know Joseph Smith, and truth be told, nobody in the church knows him. They don't know him. They don't know him. They think they do. We make movies about him when we think we know him. Yeah. We don't know him. And there was a lot written about him, and a lot in journals, and there's a lot of things he did that nobody's aware of. Mm -hmm. um, and part of the reason is because the Mormon church has hidden it. Sure. They disallow us from seeing that information, but they want us to see him as they want us to see him. I know so much about them now. The church has been apologized. Yes, and sure. and truth be told, Brigham Young is more so responsible for the success of the church, for the proliferation and the sure. you know what has become far more than Joseph. People that know Joseph's character and how he was, and and you know how destructive. He could self-destructed. He could be. They've often said, had he not been martyred, that he would have run the church into the ground. Yeah, um, probably true. Yeah, but I sit there when I when I hear I hear people say that about Jesus, and then I was sit there and think, I don't know Jesus. I didn't even know Joseph Smith.
I understand what the atonement is supposed to mean. I understand, you know, I understand all of that. And I can see how people would, would want to connect so badly um, with that, especially if they felt like they're not whole. Yeah. Oh, I forgot a question I wanted to ask you. Um, what church callings have you had over the years? I've wondered that too. Uh, gospel doctrine teacher uh, I've had. Um, when we were in Florida, I was on high council for, uh, for uh, three years. Okay. Um, um, I'm currently the ward employment specialist. Oh. Um, but I've never, I've never had a, you know, like a big calling, like a bishop. Or oh, a council. I guess it's a big calling. Yeah, I think they were desperate in Florida right. for people. <laughs> But that's uh, but that's the that's the most I've ever I've ever had. I, and I haven't had a desire to be, you know, to, to be seen as somebody who has a big church calling. Uh -huh. That's just never been important to me. The notoriety around it. Uh -huh. The around it still isn't. And so obviously, what you're telling me about you, you've never been attracted to children. One of my questions was always um, if you had calling around children. No, I never had a calling around children. Um, said that you were doing the temple videos. Did he? Yeah. When I talked to him, he said that you were working on the temple videos. When did you, how long ago did you talk to him? <laughs> Two days ago. I just wanted to ask him, because I was unclear about how that, how that happened with the state president getting involved. And so I said, Parents were never contacted by the church. We never, we never got to share their side of the story. And then, and then just in, in passing, it said that you were working on the temple videos. Did he respond to your, your point about the church never contacting your parents? Did he talk about He that just kept parents? saying, I had full faith in um, Harold, Brown. Harold Brown. He said, I had full faith in and Harold Brown, and I turned it over to Harold, recorded it, and um, and that's and then that's what he said. And he said, "I don't know what came of it." He said, "I don't know what came of it." He said, "I um, I wasn't involved in the church court," um, and he said, so he just kind of made it seem like you know he he just. Got the information from my dad. Was told to turn to report it, which which he did to Harold Brown, and uh, and then that was pretty much it. But then he did say in passing that, or, or that, because uh, I said I'm I want to make sure that that there's no other victims and that, that Sterling isn't hurting anybody, and then he said. Uh, well, I would sure hope not, because he's working right now. He's doing the temple videos for the church. And he said that on two different occasions. And he said that he's so. I don't know if that's like classified information that you're not allowed to tell people, and he shouldn't be telling people. But that's that's what he told me. Yeah. And I don't know where he would. It's interesting. I saw. Um... Oh, it, it was right around the time he was getting ready to make a <laughs> meeting and talk to him. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I remember us both saying to each other, I can't remember who said it first, but, you know, he, he said, you know, he said, I hope we're both different men than we were back then. Oh. And he turned to me and he said, I hope you're a different man than you were. And I said, yeah, I am. I'm a different man than I was mm. back then. And we had kind of a nice moment there for... Mm -hmm. For just a, a second or two, right? So, yeah, yeah. Your your kids. I've talked to your kids, and um, and like you know, so sweet. And he kind of says, you know, Van Wagen kids have a hard, hard time communicating about things. <laughs> you know, I don't like. I wouldn't label. That's, I wouldn't say that that's exclusive to the Van Wagner kids. Hardly, hardly. Yeah, I mean, I would say there's a lot of people like that, but he just, he was just kind of saying, like, 
it's, it's hard to talk about things. It's it's hard to talk about different things. And good kids, though. I think they are good kids. They are good, good people. people. I mean, when I say kids, they're they're adults now, but yeah. good they're people. Good. Really, I mean, I just think the world of all of we checked in with me today just to see, just to say, you know, hey, I hope it goes well. Yeah. Just nice, thoughtful people. You know what I mean? Um, part of me is feeling like um, that I asked myself, why did this happen to me? Like, or grew up back in his life. Why? Because he's like, no way. Like, uh, and then he says, uh, you know, that dad said this only happened to you, and then he said, why you, why sh why the one time, why sh and, and then I'm saying to myself, yeah, because I'm a faith-filled person, um, why, why me, why am I that one person, see, and I don't know, like, I'm just struggling with Honestly, I'm, I'm... I wish I had an answer for that one. I really do, but I, I sure don't know either. Part of me says, um, and this is what part of me has been saying all along, is that there's probably other victims out there, and I need to, to be that strong person that makes it okay to come forward. See? Sure. That's part of me that's saying that. Well, that helps you to make sense of why this happened, yeah. And then the other part of me is saying, Maybe, well, I do think the church was really, really probably didn't handle it properly, in my opinion. Um, and maybe I'm supposed to be a voice for that change, too. I don't know. I mean, I'm out of the church, but my whole family's still in the church. All my friends are in the church. So these are two of the things that I'm grappling sure. with the most is making sense of you know, of why that happened to me. Sure. Understandably. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've got a couple of things I'm still trying to make sense of, too, that happened in my childhood and don't have any easy answers. So. Yeah. Look, if, if, if I am, I'm happy to talk with you anytime yeah, for any questions that come up and you, you feel yeah. like you need to talk with me. Yeah. I appreciate it. I feel like you've been forthright. I appreciate it. Just the only thing I still am struggling with is I get the affairs, I get the, you know, I get the what you're telling me, and I get the porn, and I get all of that, and I I, I still struggle with the me being the one and only kid, ever. And that being the only time you even have feelings or affection or, or, or a, a, an attraction towards, you know. Sure, I, I can understand why, yeah. you, why you continue to be concerned about that. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I wish I knew what I could say yeah. that, would, that would give you some comfort in that, on that front. Yeah, yeah, well, well, I appreciate you being honest with me, though. I do appreciate you taking the time. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Yeah. Um, I really do. Yeah, and, and uh, again, I appreciate your courage and uh, and being willing to sit down and go through all of this and ask the hard questions. Yeah, they are hard. Okay, Spirit Lee. Appreciate you doing that. All right, my friend. Well, thanks again. Sounds like you've got a good wife, too. Oh, yeah. Tell her goodbye for me. I will, Spirit Lee. Thanks. You guys are taking me. If you feel like you can talk and communicate, please feel free to do that. Okay. Thank you.